Hello and welcome back. So if you've been following along, you should now be in the position where all of your claws are fitted to your Uma and they are now skinned correctly. So from here we can now leave Blender and get this into Unity and turn them into slots so we can actually fit them onto our Uma. Um, now you can, if you wish, fiddle about with the FBX exporter um, lots of options here uh, if you've used this before the exporter and indeed the importer are um, how should we put it a little bit flaky they're not the most reliable uh, things in the world this version number of FBX is quite old and you have varying levels of success with each one personally I'm not going to bother there's absolutely no need to use the FBX exporter as Unity uh, can quite happily handle our blend file. So instead, I'm going to save my uh, file directly into my Unity project. So let's save that and jump over into Unity. So here we are in Unity. Um, it's a fresh project. Um, what you'll see here is I have Uma installed uh, and I also have that Bodyguards pack that we downloaded installed. Again, this is just because I'm going to use the textures from here to actually build my overlays. So that's that in there. Um, I've created a fresh folder called Uma Bodyguards, and this is where our slots are going to go. Um, I've got a scene which I've created here, which is a straightforward Uma generated just like we've done a thousand times, ready to go. And I've also saved my blend file, and that's what we've got here. So this is the Blender file directly in Unity. Now if we have a look at this uh, blend file, let's click on it um, and let's open the preview up by right clicking. Um, we can see that our entire UMA and all of the meshes, so there's nothing being filtered out here, um, that's all ready to go. In fact if we go to the animation, what you should see is um, our animation has come across as well. Not that we're going to use it, but it's just to show that um, Unity is quite happy to deal with Blender files. So this is going to be really useful. Not a lot we need to change here. Um, the uh, default settings should be fine. One of the problems you tend to have with other packages is uh, the scale. However, if I bring this guy straight into the scene, you'll see uh, he is a two meter tall Uma. So this is what Uma is based on. It will just work beautiful. Right, so let's have a look at processing this. Now if I unfold our blend file, you'll see there's an awful lot of stuff in here. If you're worried about this taking up space, um, you can delete the blend file after you've finished. Once our slots are generated, we don't need it anymore. So let's bring up the two windows that we're going to need. Uh, first of all, I'm going to go to Uma and bring up the global library. So this is where all of our slots and overlays are listed. Okay, so we're going to register our stuff in here, and I'm also going to bring up the uh, the slot builder down at the bottom here. Okay, and this little fella is the one that does all of the work for you. So for making clothes, it's pretty straightforward. What I'm going to do, uh, just so we don't lose any data, I'm actually going to dock this slot builder up here in my hierarchy. Okay, so that's going to go up there. Um, the library window, uh, I tell you what, let's dock that over here. There we are. So we've got our two UMA tool panels over here. So let's process one of these meshes. Let's begin with, uh, let's go for the shades first. We'll go from the top down. So we'll start with the shades. What I want is to actually make sure I've opened up my model and I find the mesh for it. So this is the skinned mesh here. I'm going to open this. I'm going to bring this into the slot mesh. This seams mesh at the top, don't worry about that for the moment. That becomes useful when we start making new races. At the moment, we can leave it blank. So our slot mesh is going to be the shades. The Uma material, um, now if we open this up, we've got a list of all the defined Uma materials. We've seen this before. The standard Uma is a diffuse normal metallic. In fact, we can prove that. Let's just close that window, run our game, and if we switch back to the inspector and have a look at our character 
and we can see here uh, down at the bottom this actually has two shaders attached to it it has the UMA matte diffuse normal metallic which again if we look at that you should be able to see where are we diffuse normal metallic and let's have a look at it as a square this is the body and it also has this mesh hair double-sided which is being used for the hair so if we use the same diffuse normal metallic uh, for our clothes those um, textures will be added to this atlas they'll be on the same material and we'll only have one draw call however um, we're going to just for practice use a different material so you'll see it appear on our generated UMA okay so if you use the same materials it all gets mashed together it makes a more efficient character different materials it will work but it won't be quite as efficient okay so let's stop that again have a look back at our UMA panels and my material if we have a look at our bodyguards and our textures what you should see um, we use bodyguard 3 here we've actually got four textures to use we've got diffuse normal specular and occlusion and ambient occlusion so let's have a look in our UMA materials and see if something follows that pattern and there we are diffuse normal specular occlusion so let's pick that one great um, our destination folder well we created let's just collapse this again we created this UMA bodyguards folder so let's pop that up there uh, we can leave the root bone as it is and we're going to call this shades M okay um, what I'm also going to do here is I'm going to say create me an overlay and create me a wardrobe recipe so this is going to create the actual textures for me and this is going to create the recipe so I can just put it straight onto my UMA. I'm also going to say add this to the global library. So this should automatically add my slot over here. So if we tick that and hit create slot, what should happen is you'll see processing and the name of the slot mesh and a success at the bottom. And straight away what you won't see is that has not added our uh, data over to the global library so we'll do that manually I think the reason it does that is because these haven't been completed yet so let's just head in here and have a little look at what we've got so you can see it's generated this shades M folder uh, and inside we have our slot again let's look at that in the inspector yep nothing we can do with that that's just a slot that works along with the skinned mesh and its mesh counterpart so these things are, are just generated for us ready to go what we are interested in are the overlay so as you can see it's generated an overlay with four textures um, let's fill those in so bodyguard 03 diffuse again we're going in the order that they appear in the name diffuse uh, bodyguard 03 normal bodyguard 03 specular and bodyguard 03 occlusion brilliant so that is our overlay sorted out um one thing this this overlay is used for everything if you remember we have one texture for the entirety of this outfit so i'm actually going to take it out of the shades folder put it into uma bodyguards and i'm going to rename it i'm going to call this bg3 overlay that's good and again I'm going to change it up here as well just to keep things right superb so let's have a look in our recipe so it's generated a blank recipe for us so we need to fill this in um, so the races let's say this will fit a male uh, and a male DCS brilliant um, the wardrobe slot is uh, let's say face good it's not going to hide or suppress anything else we can just add our slots to it so let's add the shade slot and let's add our overlay to that as well brilliant you can see it's telling me here this overlay isn't indexed so what I'm going to do I'm going to head to my UMA library and I'm going to just drag in this entire UMA bodyguards folder that should force it to be processed and you can see here couple of things changed 
we now updated. So if we look back at our recipe again in the inspector, so everything here now looks fine. Okay, that should work. So if I head over to my hierarchy, let's select our Uma, uh, look at his default wardrobe and let's put our shades onto him. And if I press play, there we go, we have one cool looking Uma. So effectively, it's the same process for every single piece of clothing. Slightly different because we don't need to automatically generate certain things this time. So let's just do that with one other uh, item of clothing. So um, let's have a look in here. Um, we don't need the textures anymore, do we? So instead of shades, let's create um, the torso. Okay, so again, slot builder. Uma library. In our slot builder we will say instead I want to put the torso mesh in here. Materials the same, uh, save folders the same but I'm going to change this to uh, bg top underscore m. Um, don't create an overlay because I've already got one. Um, yep create a blank recipe and let's not add to the global library because that didn't appear to work the first time. We'll do it manually. Okay, and let's create that slot. Again, that's been processed, and you should see we have a folder here, BG Top M. Okay, let's open that up, and we just need to sort out the recipe. So, the recipe, let's inspect it. We need to say mail, mail DCS, there in there. The wardrobe slot is going to be the chest, and I was looking at hiding. Uh, the mesh underneath but I think we're actually going to need one of our posh mesh hide assets to to do this job so let's just leave that as it is now let's add our slot and again that's not in the library but let's not panic about that um, and let's add our overlay to that as well again that won't be in the library either so to correct that let's just drag again our Uma bodyguards folder into here that should update. Again, have a look at our recipe again. Everything's hunky-dory. Brilliant. So let's try this out on our character. Again, let's pick our dynamic avatar. Let's add the top recipe to his defaults and hit play. And there he is. And you can see, if we go into the scene view, you can see, obviously, we've got some of our mesh poking through, just like we had before in Blender. So everything seems to be working okay. We just need to fix that up. So I'm going to make a mesh hide asset to actually fix that for us. So I'm going to go over to the top M folder because this is going to be used with that recipe. Let's right click, create an Uma misc mesh hide asset. Okay, and again, I'll give this an appropriate name. So we'll call this BG top hider good a name as any um, and up here when we do our definition our slot data asset is going to be the torso so let's have a look down here through this bewildering array here we are Uma human male torso let's pop that on there begin editing again I need to save my scene but there we are we've now got access to our torso um, what we can do here, which is lovely, because this was in Blender, I can bring in that slot and uh, pop it in here, and it will overlay on top of the torso. If I hit that guy there, so we get an idea of what we need to paint or not. A uh, couple of options we've got here. We can start painting, as always. Um, we can also hit this rear cast hidden faces. If I zap that, it does a reasonably good job of finding everything underneath our mesh and selecting it. Uh, obviously the areas where it pokes through there is a problem. So I'm just going to quickly uh, hold down shift and paint those areas it's missed. Make sure they get hidden as well. Let's have this lot and let's look around the other side looks pretty good 
looks pretty good. Um, just to be on the safe side, I'm going to get rid of these couple of polygons there. And same on the other side. But I, I like the look of this. Great. So let's save and return. And now we can use that mesh hide asset in our recipe. So let's open the recipe up and drag our hider into the mesh hide assets. So when we run now, superb, we've now got a beautifully fitting top, which doesn't have any of the underlying mesh poking through. So I've done that twice. I've done one for a simple one, one for a complicated one. I'm going to quickly blast through the others now and let's get this guy finished. And there we are, the finished article. So really, really quite simple once you've done all of that mesh wrangling to turn your uh, clothing into slots ready to work with Uma. A um, couple of things to note on that speeded up portion there is if we have a look at the pants recipe, just be sure that you use this hide base slots and I've hidden the actual legs of the Uma. And again, I've done the same with the shoes because they were poking through so I've used the hide base slot to hide the feet of our Uma. But there you go. Pretty straightforward. Um, so that was quite a long journey, quite a few videos, but hopefully by now you should be able to create your own custom clothing using Blender. Okay, hope you enjoyed that and I will see you next time. And once again, I'd like to say a big thank you to my patrons for making this possible. Uh, if you would like to support me, feel free to click that link at the end of the video. Thank you very much, and I'll see you next time.